Hello, this is Joe. And Janet. With Grow Shop, and we've reached our final video in the Gear Motor Basics series. We're going to take everything we've discussed and apply it in three real scenarios. In most applications, almost any gear motor type can be made to work, but often there's only one or two types that are well suited to meet the application objectives. We're going to show that while sometimes the choice is clear, other times it isn't, and it's a matter of weighing the application priorities. Our first application comes from the medical equipment industry. This is a patient lift for transferring patients from their beds. There were a number of requirements, but the main considerations were placed on non-back drivability, high starting torque, maintaining constant speed and torque, and low noise. There was also a specific envelope to fit the gear motor into, which was challenging. Let's look at the motor reference chart. Remember how we discussed prioritizing our application criteria in previous videos? That's what has been done here. Going down the checklist for each motor and highlighting the characteristics that meet the application requirements. You might think a brushless DC motor would be best based on noise, speed, and starting torque. But the DC motor is also a strong candidate due to its high starting torque. Although the DC motor isn't as quiet as a brushless DC and requires a certain amount of increased maintenance, the size versus torque of the DC motor would definitely do the job and meet the customer's cost objective. Now that we've selected a DC motor, let's look at the reducer reference chart to help us choose the gearbox that most closely matches the application. The selection of a reducer is pretty limited for this application as the specified envelope required that we needed to turn a corner. For that, we used the right angle gearbox, but we didn't need to sacrifice performance as it meets our torque and non-back drivable requirements. Let's double check the chart to see if there could be a better choice. We see here there really isn't based on the fact that the right angle worm gearbox is the only right angle choice that complies with the non-back drivability requirement. Once we settled on a DC motor with a right angle gearbox, we still had to consider noise levels that were higher than desired. To enhance the quietness of the brush motor, we customized it by upgrading the bearings, modifying the armature and commutator, and using specialized brushes. This motor, customized for the application, in combination with the right angle gearbox, proved to be a win-win. Looking at the speed torque curve, you can see that this motor reducer combination is an excellent choice for all the requirements. Let's move on to the next example. A commercial door manufacturer required a gear motor to power an automated sliding door. Due to the commercial setting and size constraints, an AC power source and quiet operation were needed in a small envelope. The gear motor needed to be face mounted with the output shaft in line and vertical. With performance priorities placed on speed, torque, reliability, and quiet operation. It also needed to be back drivable. As you can see from the motor reference chart, based on the power source, low noise considerations, and low maintenance requirement, an AC motor is the best fit. A brushless DC motor meets all of the performance requirements, however the cost of the control makes an AC motor the better option. Now let's choose the reducer. Looking again at our reducer reference chart, we immediately eliminated the right angle gearboxes due to the inline output shaft requirement and face mounting configuration. We also needed to consider the back drivability requirement. In case of a fire or other emergency, the occupants of the building would need to be able to open the sliding door without power. As we can see, either the planetary or a parallel shaft gearbox will work. So we need to compare the two speed torque curves to see which reducer is a better overall fit for this application. Here are the performance curves for the planetary and parallel shaft reducers of similar size that were selected for comparison in this application. The parallel shaft has a maximum torque of 225 inch pounds and is limited by mechanical constraints. The planetary, on the other hand, is able to reach 310 inch pounds due to the high torque density and intermittent operation. You may recall in an earlier video where we discussed heat dissipation and torque volume and how those come into play with intermittent duty applications. For those reasons, the planetary gearbox is a good choice for this application, as it allows for a smaller gearbox package because of the reduced thermal dissipation requirements due to intermittent operation. As an added benefit, the floating design of planetary gears absorbs more misalignment, which results in overall lower noise. This application is a great illustration that there are times when you will have multiple gear motor choices that will work in the application. 
The key is to work with a gear motor manufacturer who can provide the integral gear motor performance specifications, such as efficiencies and intermittent duty specifications, and assist with the testing. Then you should end up with an optimized solution, not just something that will work. Our final example comes to us from the food and beverage industry where a manufacturer of commercial smoothie machines needed a gear motor with high starting torque that could run continuously and required no maintenance. It also needed to be small enough to sit on a restaurant counter and run quietly enough that customers couldn't hear it. As we look at the motor reference chart, we see from the application requirements there is no clear choice. Each motor type could meet most of the performance and physical requirements of the application. Let's look again at the design criteria. From this, we can rule out the DC motor due to the voltage and maintenance requirements. Now, it looks like the brushless DC motor is the best option of the two motors that are left. However, the addition of controls makes the motor too large for the required envelope. That leaves us with an AC motor. But how do we meet the high starting torque requirement? By using a 115 volt single phase AC motor with a special capacitor, we were able to meet all the performance requirements, including high starting torque. Now let's choose the reducer. Looking on the reference chart, we can eliminate the right angle reducers due to the continuous duty cycle and size constraints. Despite meeting the speed and torque requirements, the planetary reducer does not meet the duty cycle or size requirements. That leaves us with a parallel shaft reducer which meets all the requirements. However, when mated with the selected motor, the gear motor was too large for the envelope. In this instance, we designed a shortened parallel shaft reducer with strengthened steel gears to achieve the performance, noise, and size requirements while still meeting the customer's cost point. This application shows that you don't need to make a standard off-the-shelf gear motor fit your application. Both simple modifications to a standard gear motor or full custom designs can be used to create a custom gear motor for a non-standard application. As we wrap up gear motor basics, we'd like to remind you that we've included the links below for all the tools, guides, and charts that have been used throughout the series. Thanks for sticking with us through these nine videos. We hope you feel equipped to confidently select a gear motor for your application, or at least know where to start. If you have any new products or are looking to change the gear motor in your current application, give us a call and our technical sales team and engineers will gladly assist you through the selection process. For more information about GrowShop, our products, additional technical resources, or more case studies, check out our website at www.growshop.com.